Just. Is it then? Yeah. Okay, there. Right in the middle. It's got to be right in the middle. Are you, is it on? Yes. Oh, you. Okay, let, let's pray. Holy Heavenly Father, Daddy Abba. We just, mm, we're in awe of you. We're your children, adopted into your family, accepted in the beloved, one with you. As he is, so are we in this world. You've given us your righteousness, and we stand right before you, God. Before you, God, we, right, we stand in right standing. Father, we thank you. This is a gift. Righteousness is a gift, and we receive that from you. And we come just, you know, ready to grow in this grace. We need your help. We need you. We need you in our lives to help us to grow in this grace and the knowledge of Jesus Christ. So, Father, this is your class. This is your time. Just like the book Acts was the Acts of the Apostles, but it is really the Acts of the Holy Spirit. And this is, uh, your, the Bible, this is our Bible study, but it's your Bible study. You take the lead here. We wish to be led by your Holy Spirit. Let us be, let us be our understanding coming from you, that you are the teacher. Your word says that your Holy Spirit would teach us and guide us into all truth. Well, we're reliant on that. We're relying on that right now, Father. Teach us, Lord. Amen and amen, amen. Yes. Woohoo! Okay, you ready? Yeah. Okay, let's do this. Yeah. Okay, go to Second Corinthians three. Second Corinthians three. Hold on, don't go anywhere. Roman, I just thought another one. Romans, uh, uh, Romans three nineteen. And 20. Okay, you, you ready? You Second Corinthians. Cards? Oh yeah. Okay, these are the cards. This is kind of what we're going through right now. Okay, we're gonna. This is what we're gonna be looking at today. Okay, let me show you. I got these in order. Okay, this is. Okay, let me see if I can do this right. Okay, um, let me take this. Okay, there's one card. Do you see that? This is what we're going to be looking at today. Here in His love, not. Okay, okay, and then okay. So you see that? That's good. Okay, let's do another one. Okay, let's see if we can do this. There's an, another. Okay, I got to hold it down so that the glare isn't on it. Okay, because there's, sometimes there's a glare. Do you see that? Is that good, Dylan? Yeah. Okay, let's do this one. Okay, you ready? Here's one yeah, more. Hold it down, yeah. Okay, and i got to hold it down so it doesn't uh, glare. Because if I go up, there's a glare. If I go down, there's no glare. I think that's pretty good, just like that. Yeah, that's good. Is that good? Yeah. All right, here we go. Okay. Those are the cards. That's what we're looking at. Oh, oh, I didn't do the back of this one. This is the back one, and this is the title of the class. It's the, this one here, okay, it, see it says over on the side? Okay, right, it says over, over here, it says over, okay? That's because on the back, there's a bunch more stuff. This is the name of the, we're gonna name this class the Grace Place, because that's what's going on here. But this is amazing, okay? Are you ready? Yeah. We like to talk about God's amazing grace. John Newton sings about it. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. He sang about it, Paul refers to it as abundance of grace, and super abounding grace, and, and, and in, in, in abundance of mercy, he Paul brags on grace, and so do we. Okay, so let's go here. Second, what did I say? Second Corinthians chapter three. Mm -hmm. We're gonna walk you through some things to lead you up to where I'm going to. Okay, you ready? We're gonna get, we're gonna get to the grace place, but to really appreciate grace, you gotta see. Sometimes you gotta see the other side of the coin. Okay, so we'll go we'll go there because. Okay, Jesus did that. You know that. What did I say, 2 Corinthians 3? Okay, here we go. Okay, ready? Chapter 3, verse 7. But if the ministry of death, written, it, well, let me back up. Go, let's start at 4, okay? We have, su we have such trust through Christ toward God, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think of anything as being of ourselves, but our suffic sufficiency is from God. Okay, in Ephesians, he says, we are God's workmanship, meaning that we are a work of God. So our sufficiency is from God. Verse 6, who has also made us as sufficient, sufficient as ministers of the new covenant, 
not of the letter, but of the spirit. What would be the letter, Dylan? The law. The law, yeah. yeah. Right? Not of the letter, but of the spirit. For the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. Now, the law kills. Mm -hmm. It says that elsewhere in scripture, right? It says this is the, the law um, brings death, or mm -hmm. it says the law is a ministry of, of condemnation. Death, death yeah. or condemnation. Yeah. yeah. Um, he says that we're not under, okay. How does he say it just before he says, um, uh, we're not under the law, we're under grace. What was the verse just before that? He says um, the law, so, the law makes sin come alive. Yes. Yeah, right? Yeah, increase sin. That's why increase he says, increase. that's why it says the law kills, because it actually makes sin come alive. Right. Right? right? Yeah, yeah. Right? And the wages of sin is death. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And the, yeah, and the wages of sin is death. So it says, um, not to the letter, but of the spirit, for the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. Here it goes, verse 7. But if the ministry of death, written engraved on stones, he's talking about the Ten Commandments there, ministry of death, mm -hmm. was glorious, so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the face of Moses because of the glory of his countenance, which glory was passing away, how will the ministry of the Spirit not be more glorious? For if the ministry of condemnation had glory, the ministry of righteousness exceeds much more glory. So he's referring to that law, the message of the law, as being a ministry of death, right? That it, it, that it, it's, um, that it kills, and, and it's a ministry of condemnation. Okay, see there, he says it's a ministry of condemnation. Now, this is what people have to understand. Okay, this is important. Go to Matthew. Okay. The law is a ministry of condemnation. The letter kills. Okay? Go to Matthew 12. Or Matthew 12, yeah, ch chapter 12, verse 36. Okay. This is what you have to understand. At times, Jesus did do a ministry of, what did he say? Ministry of condemnation. And I, t I explained to people that Jesus actually had two ministries. One was a law that actually kills, actually brings condemnation, and the other one is where he's putting it on himself, and what you're going to get through faith in him, the abundant life, eternal life, you know, you won't perish, right? You won't be condemned, Right? No right. condemnation, right? Yeah, yeah. No judgment. You already passed from death and life. You, um, he says, he told, told Martha, you'll never die. You know? Jesus was just being uh, evangelistic. He was using the law for its purpose to, to bring people to repentance. You That's know? good. That's yeah. what the law is good for. It's the good law is meant to it's silence it's your pride. And your pride. Romans 3.19 says the law was given to the Jews. It was given to those under the law. That means the law was given to the Jews to silence their pride and to show them their guilt. Mm -hmm. That's Romans 3.19. Right. Right? right? And so, and Jesus used the law for that, mm -hmm. to silence their pride and show them their guilt. And I'm going to show you, and here's an example of it. Uh, Matthew 12. Okay, um, that's not even it. Twelve thirty-six. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. But every idle word that men. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. But I say to you that every idle word men may speak, they will give an account in the day of judgment. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. Now here Jesus is putting. This is Jesus speaking, mm. right? And right. he's talking about. Just your words, you will be condemned. Right. Now, is that a ministry of condemnation? Or okay. is that a ministry of no condemnation? Because he gave a ministry of no condemnation. Here he's giving a ministry of no condemnation? It's condemnation. Condemnation, just for your words. Right. Jesus is saying this. So you see, there has to be a ministry of condemnation and a ministry of no condemnation where he's putting it on him. When he's putting it on you and anything you say... You could be held accountable. Ministry of condemnation. Jesus also said that, it said that, that, that you have to be born again. It didn't, it's not your words that make you justified, but it's being born again that makes you justified. Yeah, yeah. So you have to Absolutely. Consideration. Yeah. Well, well, he takes us into a faith walk. Yeah. Well, like Paul says, the just shall live by faith. Yeah. Well, Jesus does take you to a faith walk when he's putting it on him and your faith in him. Nobody right. coming to the Father except by him. Now, if you trust in him as the way to the Father, then, yeah. That's the ministry of no condemnation. The ministry Jesus that. said, "Those uh, there's no condemnation for those in Him, in Christ." Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. So, right. Yeah. Okay. Let's go to another one. Let's go to uh, Luke chapter six, which is also the sermon about. It, yeah. Right, exactly. 
Well, this was not Sermon on the Mount, what we just well, looked at. That was the Sermon no, on the Mount, Matthew 12. That was no. the Sermon on the Mount. No, it wasn't. But, but you're, you're right. It is also Sermon It's not just it, Sermon on the Mount is not just in Matthew uh, 5 through, through 7. Yeah, it's also in It's Luke. also in Luke miniaturized. It's half a chapter in, right, in Luke. Right, right. So that's a, that's a good point. You know, but and that, that's a good point because in Sermon on the Mount, there is a lot of, of, of hell, talk, condemnation, judgment. And law. A lot of that in Matthew. Yeah. But I want to just want to go to Luke because Luke really kind of minimizes it because, like I say, it's, it's, it's Sermon on the Mount in miniature. It's only half a chapter in Luke, and it's uh, three, three long chapters in Matthew. And here in Luke chapter 6, he says, verse 37, Judge not, and you will not be judged. Condemn not, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Mm-hmm. So right there he's saying, hey, there is condemnation. For those who want to condemn people, you want to condemn other people, you're going to be condemned. Is that a ministry of condemnation? Absolutely. Or is that a ministry of no condemnation? It's condemnation for... Based it would be no mind. condemnation. You said, hey, you judge people, you condemn people, you don't forgive people, and there's still no condemnation in Christ. Right. Right? right. I'm not encouraging you to go and condemn people, but it comes from a new, the, the, the motivation, it comes from a new heart that God gives you from him imputing his Holy Spirit into believers. That's where the motivation comes from in the New Covenant. It is not you got to earn it, right? Right. It's right. not you got to work for it because the Bible says our relationship with God in the new covenant is for those who work not. This is a works relationship. Yeah. You got to work for no condemnation. You got to work at never condemning anybody in order to find, uh, uh, or I'm going to be condemned. But that would be a ministry of condemnation because he's threatening condemnation. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Let's go to Matthew. Okay. There's a lot of condemnation in, in, in when he goes in detail about it. Look at this. Okay, Matthew chapter um, uh, 22. Chapter 22. Uh, I'm sorry, chapter 5, 22. Chapter 5, verse 22. But I say to you, whoever is angry with his brother without a cause will be in danger of judgment. judgment right? Yes. And whoever says to his brother, Raka, will be in danger of the council. But whoever says, you fool, will be in danger of hellfire. He's threatening hell there, mm-hmm. right? right? And judgment. Right. Would that be a ministry of condemnation? It is definitely. Or a ministry of no condemnation? It's definitely a ministry of condemnation. Okay. Yeah. So that if that's a ministry of condemnation, remember he talked about there was a ministry of condemnation. Yes. That's where Jesus, Jesus is ministering condemnation. Let's look at where Jesus is ministering no condemnation. Okay. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Because he did have two ministries. He did speak death, right? He mentioned hell in here. He just said you can go to hell just for calling somebody a fool. Right? Mm-hmm. What did Jesus say elsewhere? You believe on the Son, you won't perish. Right? Right. right. You believe on him, you won't perish. He said, let's, let's go there. Okay, so now we're going to get into John. Okay? Mm-hmm. Let's go to John does not talk about any threats of judgment, condemnation, hell, none of those parables that could be very scary. The Gospel of John never goes there because it's he just goes with the Gospel. Yeah, he just straight up hits you with what it is to believe on Jesus Christ and what you're going to get on account of it. Right. He didn't talk about you're going to be condemned or you go to hell or judgment because or any idle word you speak, you could be condemned. John doesn't go there at all. The only, the only thing he says is for unbelief. Unbelief, for unbelief, you'll be condemned. That's right. John yeah. just goes with belief and unbeliever. Yeah. Either, there, there's either, no middle ground. Yeah. It's there's no right. if you yeah. might be condemned if you do this. There's none of that if, iffy stuff. It's just, it's it's just believers believe. and unbelievers. Thank yeah. you. That's, that's very good. That's basically it. That's what John does. That's the summary of John. So let's go to John and look what John says in John chapter, in John chapter 3. Okay. Let's see what John has to say about this condemnation. If you condemn, you'll be condemned. If any idle word you speak, you'll be condemned. If you're angry, you can go to judgment. You know, you can go to hell just for calling somebody a fool. Like he said, any idle word, condemnation. And Matthew expounds on that saying, you just call somebody a fool. You can go to hell. You're in danger of going to hell. Yeah. Right? Right, right, right. What does John say about going to hell? Let's look what John says. John takes you into what it means to be born again. Right. When he talks to Nicodemus, mm-hmm. he's talking about you must be born again to see the kingdom. In Matthew, he said you've got to be more righteous than the Pharisees if you want to get in the kingdom. Which is right? Yeah. yeah. But John says you've got to be born again right. to get in the kingdom. Right. You've got to be born of the Spirit. That which is flesh is flesh, that which is spirit is spirit. You must be born of the Spirit if you expect to see the kingdom. He takes another direction. Yeah. Right? Yeah. He doesn't even go this direction. Jesus does. Yeah. But you notice in the whole Sermon on the Mount, he never mentioned himself as a solution. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Whole sermon on Mount, whenever he's talking about condemnation, you're under condemnation, judgment, hell, you know, those threats of Dane, you know, he's never putting himself out there saying, well, but I'm the solution. You know, he doesn't go there. Mm-hmm. John just goes there. Jesus is the solution. Right, right. He just goes there that he's a solution. If you don't have him, you're, you're done. Mm. You got him, it's all good. You don't have him, you're done. You're going to perish if you don't have him. But if you have him, you have eternal life. You're not going to be condemned if you don't have You're not going to be condemned if you have him. If you don't have him, you're condemned already just for not having him. That's what John says. Right. Yeah, yeah, right? Big difference, big difference. It is. Let's look. Let's see what John has to say about it. This condemnation. That Jesus is threatening people. Now, this is Jesus too. Mm-hmm. It's just John expounding on Jesus, John on Jesus, only from his putting himself as a solution. Right, right. Grace and truth. Putting everything on him. Matthew, Mark, and Luke dance around these areas where Jesus is ministering, putting it on you, and what you're going to get, what you, how you got to work hard to get this. John just takes you into the only work God wants is for you to believe on the Son. Mm-hmm. That's the work, right? Right. Okay, this is heavy. Nobody's teaching it like this. No, no, no. Okay, so off the bat in John chapter 3, he says, he says, uh, t- uh, John chapter 3, verse 5, he says, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is, he's telling this to Nicodemus, okay, he comes at night to talk to Jesus, they're having this conversation. Mm-hmm. He says, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. See, there he says you've got to be born of the of water and the Spirit to enter the kingdom, Okay. Before, he said you got to be more righteous than, than the Pharisees to get in the kingdom, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. This is taking a different, different direction, okay? That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of spirit is spirit, okay? So he's talking about being born of the spirit. He's expounding on born of water and the spirit in verse 6. He says that, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. That's the water and the spirit. Yeah. The flesh. Well, it's the people have different opinions on I what that means to be born of water. I don't really it's want to get into all that, but you know, know some some people think it's be just. Water it, baptism. It, it, some people so, say that, but I don't believe I, that. I, I think just being born of water is where he's talking because we're our bodies are ninety percent water. Yeah, I agree with that. You know, so I think it's just talking about our bodily, fleshy, whatever. Yeah, however, we come born. into this world, being born of a woman. Yeah. Some people say it's because of a woman her water breaks. Yeah. And we're born. Either way, it's just being born of the flesh. It's just human nature. Yeah, yeah. But but it's basically there. saying that we're just born of Adam. Yeah, born of Adam. And yeah, that okay. that's the flesh. That's born yeah. of the flesh. Born of the flesh and the other is born of the spirit. Right, as opposed the, to being born of the spirit, which is something you only get yeah. again to get to, to, to what Jesus said, nobody comes to the Father except by me. Yeah. So when you come to the Father through Jesus, you're going to be born of the spirit. Right, right, right. right. That make, makes sense? Yeah, that makes perfect sense, yeah. And that's where John goes. He right. go, just goes to come unto Jesus for everything you need. Yeah, right? Through Jesus. And allow him to work in and through you. Not through through the power of the Holy yeah. Spirit in you. Yeah, through Jesus. That, that's the direction Jesus you want to go. That's the where John, that's the direction John goes. Right. But I, I mainly want you to see this because there's a lot here and I don't want to I want to get to where I'm going. Oh, of course. Of course. But but I just want you to see because we're talking about condemnation. Okay. And he says John three sixteen. Okay. Well, let's look at fourteen. It says, John 3, 14. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so the Son of Man must be lifted up. What is he talking about? Talking about the cross. The cross, lifted up on the cross. That whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. So how am I not going to perish? How am I going to prevent from going to... Is it good? Looking at this, yeah. am I going to keep from going to hell because I never call you a fool? No, it's not. Am, am I going to be able to keep from being condemned because I'm not condemning someone? No, it's not. That's a, it's a different right? Direction. It's a different direction. He's saying that if you're believing on him being lifted up on the cross, in the same way they lifted up Moses, Moses lifted up sermon in the wilderness, they just believed on that. I, I don't want to get into all that, but that was a, you know, they were that's sick, they were dying, yeah. and they prayed, and they, they asked, and Moses was told by God to lift up the snake on a pole, mm-hmm. a bronze snake on a pole, lift it up, and anybody who looks at the snake We'll, we'll live. Yeah, and that's what and, and, and so it just calls for some faith to believe that this is going to save me. Mm-hmm. Right? That's all. And, and people just with faith believe that this is going to work for me. I won't die from these poisonous snake bites. Mm-hmm. And I could just look at that bronze snake on a pole and I won't die. That's key. I won't perish. Yeah. And he's saying in the same way that Jesus lifted up on a cross, you just look to him with faith that this is going to work for me. And I won't perish. 
right, right. I will have eternal life. Amen. Amen. That's what he says. Yeah. Right? right? That whoever believes in him would not perish but have eternal life. Verse 15. Mm -hmm. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that anyone who believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn. See? Not to condemn. But wait a minute. It says here, for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. But Jesus is ministering condemnation in other places. Right. Yeah. So it's obviously... Uh... So where is this no condemnation going to come from? Mm -hmm. He just told you from him being lifted up on the cross. Mm -hmm. right? Right, right? Right, So when he was ministering condemnation, he wasn't referring to the cross. He was, under he was referring to you and your ability to work for this. And he's showing that it's impossible to work And for showing you that it is impossible to do so. Yeah. That you need a better way. He says you must be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. That's why he said nobody comes to the father except by me. Right, right. You're not going to get to the Father by your ability to stop calling people a fool or to stop condemning or to be more righteous than the Pharisees or, <laughs> or be perfect as your, as your Heavenly Father is perfect. That's never going to get you there. That's never going to work. Yeah. Nobody comes to the Father except by me. That's what he says when he's introducing himself as a solution. You want to get to the Father now that I'm here, mm -hmm. it's only going to be through me. Right. And that's where you're not going to get any condemnation. Amen, amen. It's through Jesus, faith in him. That's right. Right? Yeah, that's right. And then it says, verse 18, he who believes in him, Jesus, is not condemned. No condemnation. Mm -hmm. So you could exclude all those scriptures that are telling you, hey, by every other word you speak, you'll be condemned. If you condemn someone, you're going to be condemned. You judge, you're going to be judged. You don't forgive, you won't be forgiven. None of that applies here. To the believer on Jesus Christ, who is trusting him, coming to the Father through him. Mm -hmm. Trusting in what he's, the work of the cross. Him being lifted up. In the same way I could look at him, I don't have to be, I don't have to be punished. Right, right. Right? Because yeah, he's punished for thank, me. Thank God for that. Really? Yeah. I mean, really? Yeah. And we take away from that. We want to put a price tag on this beautiful gift of God's grace. We yeah. want to put a price tag on it. And that's we call cheap, this cheap grace. That's what cheapens grace is putting the price tag on it. Yeah, you cheap, they cheapen grace when they put a price tag on what God is giving for free. Yeah, because it's, it's better than cheap. It is free. People yeah. call it cheap grace, but they're cheapening it when they put a price tag on grace when God is doing it. It's just God's choosing. He wants to do it. Yeah. God so loved the world that he, you could just say this, God so loved the world that he chose to give his son. This is his choice. He wanted to do it this way. This is his doing. Mm -hmm. The Bible says we are, work, we are God's workmanship created in Christ unto good works that he prepared in advance. But he says we are God's workmanship. This is the work of God. This is something he's doing in and through us. Okay, we need to give him the glory for it. But let's look at this. I want you to see this. Because we're going to get into John for a minute. I want you to see what's going on with John. Okay. So it says that, uh, it says that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. For John 3.16. Most, most, most... Uh, Recognize most most memorized scripture in all the Bible is this one, John three sixteen. Everybody knows John three sixteen. God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that anybody who believes in Him will not perish but have eternal life. Most people can read that from heart. No, they they can, you know, they know that verse. Okay, but you know what this is saying? This is what I see. Okay, mm -hmm. that Jesus is the love of God, because He says God so loved the world that He gave His Son. So when you're looking at Jesus, you're seeing evidence of God's love. You're seeing the love of God. Yes, it, it, Jesus' ministry is the same as the Father, because he says he only does what he sees the Father doing. Yeah. So Jesus' ministry, is, is Jesus loves the world just as much as the Father does. Well, when he's going to the cross and he's dying for the sins of the world, uh -huh. he's showing you this is how much God loves you. Right, right. I'm sh revealing the love of God. Absolutely. Okay, so that's what he's doing. Jesus is the love of God. So when you look at it that way and you start to read certain scriptures, because here's the thing. Because mm -hmm. we have a lot of scriptures that say, well, you know, uh, no eye has seen nor ears heard the things that God has prepared for those who love him. Right? Mm -hmm. He says that he works all things out for good to those who love him. Those are called according to his purpose. And people, you know, you think that you've got to, if they take the scripture that is old covenant that says you have to love God with all your mind, soul, and strength, right? Now all of a sudden I, I, that can hurt. Taking that, which was law, 
And bringing that over here where he's saying, hey, if you love him, you'll work it all out for good. Hey, if you love him, he's just going to, you know, you can't even imagine what he's got in store for you. Now you think you've got to work for that. Not because you think you have to love him, and now you're trying to love him with all your heart, all your mind. You're trying to, you're trying to make it happen. Yeah, you can never do it. But yeah. the, what I see here is because he's saying God so loved the world that he gave his son, you're just responding to Jesus. Mm -hmm. You're responding to the love of God. God loved me so much. He loved my every, the whole world so much that he gave his son. So I'm just responding to his love now. Mm -hmm. So when you see it from that perspective... It's not, well, I have to love him. How do I know I love him? How can I, how do I know that, you know, because he only has, he, he's got any, no eye has seen, no eye has heard, uh, no eye has seen, no ear has heard all that he has for st in store for those who love him. Mm -hmm. Well, is that me? Do I love him enough? I mean, you know, well, the Bible can, says can I earn that, it? It says it's not that we love God. That's where I'm going. Yeah. You see, that's the, that's the point. It's, the Bible says here in his love, not that we love God, but that he loved us. So that ties in with the point I'm trying to make. Right, right. Right? Yeah. The, you see, because we're just responding to his love. Right. That's all we're doing. He, he, Jesus even said, a new commandment I give you, love one another as I have loved you. My love for others has to be a respond, responding to his love. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. Like he says elsewhere in First John, he says, we only love him because he first loved us. Mm -hmm. So my love for him is just a response to his love. Okay. Uh, are you feeling me? Yeah. Let me see if I'm making sense, okay? Okay, you go on. Okay, yeah. so let, look at John. Okay, so go back to John 1. John 1. Okay. For as many as received him. Now, remember, he's the love of God. This is verse 12, okay. Right? Yeah. I didn't say that? No. Oh, first John, John, uh, John chapter 1, not First John, Gospel of John chapter 1, verse 12. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, even to those who believe on his name, who are born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh. See, that's where I think he's talking about, like, you know, the, that which is flesh is flesh, that which is spirit is spirit. Yeah, he's founding on that. Yeah, yeah that right? Passage. Yeah. It just means the will of the flesh. It means something, it, it's yeah. something they, they have, chose to have a kid. Okay, yeah. nor of the will of man, but of God. So you're born of God now. Okay, right? Mm -hmm. Who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, but of the will, of, nor the will of man, but of God. Now, he says those who receive him. That's talking about just receiving his love. God so loved the world, he gave his son. Mm -hmm. So all those who receive God's love, Jesus, you're just responding to that love mm -hmm. of God. And you have a right to become a child of God because you're responding to his love. Mm -hmm. When you're receiving Jesus, you're responding to the love of God. God so loved the world, he gave his son. So if you're receiving a son, you're just responding to the love of the Father. That's what we're doing now today as a new covenant believer. We're just responding to his love first. It is not you have to love him with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. It's not commanded love. He's commanding us. Okay. There is a new commandment. Mm -hmm. And it is a commandment. But if you look at what that commandment really says, it's saying he's commanding you, receive my love. Want to look? Sure, John. 13. Go John 13. John 13? Yeah. Okay. Because remember, he said, God so loved the world that he gave his only son. He said, if you just receive his son, mm -hmm. receive this love of the Father in sending his son, he'll give you the right to become a child of God. Now let's look at this. John 13. Mm -hmm. Now he gives us a new commandment. And if you think this is just, hey, I, I got to get out there and start loving people, you know, because after all, he's commanding me to love people, you're missing it. Okay, because it, it is a commandment to love. But look what he says. Yeah, verse 34. Verse right? 34. A new commandment I give you, that you love one another as I have loved you. This is a new commandment. This is the new covenant. Mm -hmm. This means that he is now asking you to receive my love. See, we're just recipient. Like he said, you receive Jesus. He gives the right to bring the children of God. Mm -hmm. He says here now that you're receiving his love, pass it on. But you see that? That's so you you yeah. You're receiving his love first. Right, right. That's so this is a commandment to receive my love. Yeah, just, say, just like okay. he says, receive my son. Right, right, right. That's the new commandment. I'm going to show you in a minute. That is the commandment of the new commandment. Receive my son, receive my love. Pass it on. That's what it says the new commandment is. Right, right. So it's just receiving the love of God. Because look what it says. 
A new yeah. commandment I give you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this, all will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. And people th- land on that. They say, see, you got, you, to show you're as a disciple, you've got to love people. You've got to get out there and love people. But, he said, but you're missing the fact that he said, you've got to love people the way I love you. Right, they, they miss that, yeah. It, it's just my love for you. Right, right. Right? Yeah. So you got to ask yourself, how much has God forgiven me? How much does God love me? You know, how, how much has he blessed me? How much is he for me? Right. And so he, that I can be for you. So I can be blessing you. So I can be forgiving you. So that I can be loving you. So I can pass on what I'm getting. If you focus on the condemning words uh, of Jesus' ministry of condemnation, then you're not going to receive his love very effectively. You're going to be you're going to be mixed, you see a mixture. thank you that's the point I'm trying to make yeah is those are those are two opposites right right there are two gonna, different ministries the ministry it's, it's law it's, and it's grace right. it's law when he's putting it on you and you're threatening you with condemnation judgment hell and, it, and it's grace when he's putting it on himself and what you're going to get through faith in him right that's that's the difference and they don't mix and like you say, it'll steal from this. And it'll keep you from receiving the love of God. Oh, my God, it'll keep you from receiving the love of God if I think that, oh, he'll, he's ready to condemn me if I condemn. Yeah. He's going to judge me if I judge. Well, okay, so what am I saying? We can just go judge and we can condemn? No, not at all. I'm saying that first, if you're receiving no condemnation, it'd be a lot easier for you not to condemn. If mm-hmm. you're receiving no judgment, yeah, it'd be a lot easier for me not to judge you because yeah. I know God is doing this for me. I'm experiencing it. Now I know what it feels like to be totally no condemnation, total no judgment, total forgiveness. Mm -hmm. So it is not, if I judge, I'll be judged. If I condemn, I'll be condemned. If I don't forgive, I won't be forgiven. Now it's, thank you that I have no condemnation. Makes it a lot easier for me to not condemn you. So I'm, I'm, like he said, love one another as I have loved you. So see, it's two opposites. Mm -hmm. This is if you don't condemn, you won't be condemned. This is receive no condemnation. Now don't go. Don't condemn the way I can. Don't condemn you. And and if you really, Paul, that's what he says. He says to go forgive one another as Christ has, has forgiven. forgiven you. Right. All right. It, it said Paul says yeah. that. That's Paul's ministry. Right. He says I only preach Christ and him crucified. So his message always takes in the cross. Jesus didn't go to the cross. He didn't do that. He didn't always take in the cross. Mm-hmm. That's what he's talking about when he said, "If the snake must be li- in the snake way, the snake was lifted up, so the Son of Man must be lifted up." Future, right? Yeah. Something in the future. That's the cross. Right. But he couldn't preach like it was here yet, like Paul does. Right. Right. Yeah. He couldn't preach like that. He couldn't. But he could say, "What you're going to get if you just trust in me, dude? No punishment, no judgment, no condemnation. You'll never die. You already passed from death to life. You got eternal life. You're not going to perish. You're blessed." People forget that Paul, what Paul uh, received was right, directly revelation from Jesus Christ. He gave the. He, he, yeah, he, he says, the, I think he in Galatians. Galatians. He said that I, the Lord gave it to him right after the cross. He gave, he got direct revelation from Jesus. You know, so people think that you know, though it doesn't. After the cross, it goes, it it, it clicks. You know. He says that in Galatians somewhere. Do you know where? Um, I, don't know I think it's the first chapter. He says, I got a re- direct revelation of Jesus. Yeah, it says here, Galatians chapter 1, verse 11. Paul says, But I make known to you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached by me is not according to man. For I neither received it from man nor was taught it, but it came by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Jesus revealed this to him, right. this gospel message. Yeah. Okay. But it was a message that it was was Jesus, it was Jesus ministering to Paul what comes through the cross. Right, right. So there's a message from Jesus after the cross, and there's a message from Jesus before the cross. A lot of kingdom messages before the cross. Yeah. After the cross, it's the gospel that's taking the cross into account. These are actually two different messages. The closest thing to Paul's message of Jesus ministering after the cross through Paul what he gave Paul, the message yeah. to preach, uh-huh. okay, the closest thing to that is where Jesus is putting everything on him and saying, hey, you believe on the Son, you won't perish. You believe on the Son, you won't be condemned. Right, right, right. He says the, those who don't believe, the wrath of God abides on them. Mm-hmm. See, he's throwing the wrath on the unbeliever. So mm-hmm. you want to believe. This is, this is, this is a commandment yeah, to believe. Yeah, if you break the commandment, you're going to go to hell. 
Right, but right. if you keep the commandment, like it says, his commandments are not burdensome. Yeah. Okay, keep his commandments. Well, his commandment today is to believe on the Son, and you won't go to hell. Yeah. One if you don't believe, the wrath of God abides on those who don't believe. He says that. It's one commandment. It's, it's just one commandment. It's we're going to look at that. That's where we're going. But I want you to stay here it's in John like Adam, for a minute. It's like Adam had one law, you know, the, the not even, you know, one law. We have one law, just to believe. It is. Yeah. It just is to believe and receive his love and, and, and pass it on. That's yeah. the commandment. The yeah. commandment, like you said, love one another as I have loved you. So if that's a commandment to love one another, a commandment mm -hmm. to love one another as I love you, what comes first? His love. He's mm -hmm. commanding you to receive my love and then please pass it on. Well, yeah. Right? Yeah. So other people uh, that's can, the commandment. Other people can benefit. Right? Yeah. And, and the other commandment would be would to just believe on my son. That's a commandment because if you don't, mm -hmm. if you want to break that commandment, you're going to go to hell. But if you keep the commandment, believe on my son, and receive my love and love those the way I love you, you'll be keeping my commandment and you're blessed. Right? Right, right, right. And you're going to go to heaven, eternity. But, but I'm going to prove this to you. This is, this is heavy. Okay, so all of these are in John, right? Right. Um, God yeah. so loved the world that he gave his son. To those who believe, you won't perish. Mm -hmm. You receive him, you'll have the right to be called a child of God. This new commandment, this stuff you only find in John. Mm -hmm. But he's going to the heart of the gospel. This is the heart of the gospel. This is the grace place. This is where you want to find a sure foundation, standing on Jesus Christ. There's no other foundation laid except Jesus Christ, the Bible says. And we want to stand on him. Jesus talked to me in the Sermon on the Mount about two houses, one built on sand, one built on rock. You want to build your house on sand or rock? rock. Okay, there's no middle ground. Right. If you're on sand, it's anywhere that's not on rock. Okay? If you're on the rock, you're safe. You're secure in Christ. He's like a net that's going to catch you if you fall. You know, you're going to fall right into the arms of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Right? You are. So let's look at this. Okay, so he said, okay, so we have a new commandment. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's look at, at, at John 6, 28. Now you notice in Matthew, there's a lot of work. You got you to gotta work it. You got you to love everybody. You got to bless everybody. You got to give to anybody. You got to turn the other cheek. You got to, it's a lot of if work. You're sued, then you huh? gotta, if you're sued, you got to give. If you sue, you, you got to give, give more. Everything. You got to give than everything. Than you got to give more than, than, than what they ask for. You know, you gotta. You know, you, you, you can never be angry. You can. You, you can never lust. You know, you gotta reconcile with everybody, forgive everybody. Like in Luke, like in Luke, he says you gotta. You can't condemn anybody. You can't. Um, uh, uh, you can't. You can't judge anybody. You gotta forgive everybody. It's just, it's a lot of work. It, it is a burden to just. Tr yeah. To you can feel the heavy. To keep your focus on all this. Yeah, there's a lot right? to take into consideration. Right? Yeah. So where was I just going to go? You're going to John 6, 28. Okay, John 6, 28. But John says this, as far as your work is concerned, mm -hmm. right? Six. Yeah. Easy. Yeah. John 6, 28. Then the people came to Jesus and they said to him, What shall we do that we may work the works of God? And Jesus answered and said to them, this is the work of God, that you believe in him he sent. That's it. Mm -hmm. So what is the work? Well, he said the new commandment, we have only one commandment that Jesus said is new. Mm -hmm. And he said to love the way I love you. Right? Mm -hmm. That's the new commandment. Here, what is the work? This is the work of God, that you believe on the Son. Right? And Jesus' work is so done on the cross. There you have a work and you have a commandment. Right? right? The work is to believe and the commandment is to receive his love and pass it on. Right. Do you see that? I see that, yeah. Okay, okay, that's good. Okay. Now, let's go, let's go, okay. did you hear me? Mm -hmm. So, the work, I'm going to bring this together in a minute. Okay. But the work, he says, is to believe on him who we sent, okay? And the commandment is to love others the way he loves you, okay? So you got a work and a commandment. Okay. New. This okay. is something that John is taking into a new program. This is something you only find in John. One work. One new commandment. That's the stuff you find in John. You don't find it in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Matter of fact, you can find a lot of judgment, condemnation, a ministry of condemnation over there. You don't find that ministry of condemnation here in John. Mm -hmm. This is good. 
Watch this. Go, let's go to his will. Now, you don't see this in Matthew, Mark, or Luke. What you find in John is that Jesus is just putting it on him. When he, when he introduces himself as a solution, it's a, new will of, it's a new will of the Father. Because now the will of the Father is to believe. What do he say to work? Believe. Right. Watch what he says here with the will of the Father. Believe. What was the commandment that he gave you, the new commandment? To believe. To receive. To receive. Believe and receive. To receive his receive. love. Oh, receive. Okay. Right? What yeah. was the new commandment? To receive his love. He said, love one another. New commandment, love one another as I have loved you. I see. I so see. what was the new commandment? To receive his love and pass it on. Right, right. Okay? okay. But what is the work of God? To believe on, on the one whom he sent. And watch this. What is the will? Let's start at this. Now, this is where Jesus introduces himself mm. as solution. He didn't do that in Sermon on the Mount. Matthew 5, 6, and 7, he never introduced himself as a solution to this problem. He just kind of introduced the problem. Okay? Mm -hmm. The stuff that you do wrong. Right. You, never, you don't turn the other cheek. You don't love those who hate you. That's true. You don't bless those who curse you. Yeah. He's dealing with these Jews who hate the, the Romans. They hated Jesus. They, they, they hated Jesus. They hated the Romans, the Gentiles, the Samaritans, the tax the prostitutes, all the sinners. They just hated and he's telling them, you got to love everybody. Your enemies. Yeah. That means everybody. If you got to love your enemies, should you love your friends? Okay. I would hope so. Yeah, well, so yeah. Okay. Yeah. He says, love your enemies. Right. He, he says, says bless those who curse you. He says, love your neighbor, too. So right. So friend. he's taking them a whole day. He's burying yeah. them in a whole bunch of stuff they don't do. Right, right. They, they, Matter of fact, they can't do it. They don't have a capacity. They're, they're in the flesh. Jesus, the, Paul says in Romans that those that are in the flesh cannot please God. Right. They were in the flesh. Right, right. They couldn't do it. Yeah. All this he's telling them to do, Paul says in Romans chapter 3, he says, none of you are righteous. He said, you've got to be more than the Pharisees. Mm -hmm. And he says, none of you are righteous. None of you do good. Okay. None of you even seek after God. He said, you've got to love God with all your mind, soul, and strength. He said, that's one of the commandments in the law. When the guy said, what is the greatest commandment in the law? He gave him law. And he said, love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And love your neighbor the way you love yourself. But Paul says in Romans chapter 3, no one seeks after God. Mm -hmm. So he's telling them a bunch of stuff they don't do, they probably they can't do, they could try, but they're going to fail somewhere. In the Bible, in Je Paul, and James says in the law, you got to do everything or you, you're, you're guilty of it all. You, right. you, you break one, you're guilty of all. Paul said if you go under law, you go under a curse because you have to do everything written in the whole book, all of it. Okay, well, so they're, they're going to fail. No matter what, you, all this that Jesus is telling them, they're going to fail miserably. Okay. Even, even Paul, he, he, he tried and he... He said he, he, he uh, thought he did a pretty bang up job, but he even said that that didn't count. Yeah. That Jesus counts. Yeah. yeah. So let's look at the will. Okay. Now this is John in the Gospel of John. John introduces Jesus Jesus in a have, in a big way, and here he goes. Here comes Jesus saying, "Now what you're going to get because you just trust in me. It's not condemnation." What he's um, we didn't go to John where he said, we did. We, did we yeah, see in John where he said the, there's no the condemnation? No, we didn't. No, you haven't gotten to the, the you, you talked about. Uh, in John chapter 3? No, you already Where he says, that. he who believes in him is not condemned? Did I go through that? Yeah, you did, but you didn't go into. But he who does not believe is condemned already John because he has not believed? You're talking about the will of the Father. No, I know, John but I, I didn't, oh. I wasn't sure if we finished that when I was talking about oh. no condemnation. Okay. Uh, I don't ahead. think we finished that. Okay, go back to it. Because I want you to see this okay. in, in John 3.18, because he says, when he's introducing himself as a solution, okay. he says, verse 18, concerning condemnation, because remember, Jesus can put you under condemnation in places. Mm -hmm. But here when he's introducing himself as a solution, he says, verse uh, 318, he who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already. Okay? Mm -hmm. Because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son. Okay? Mm -hmm. Go to 36. Verse 36, same chapter, chapter 3. He who believes in the Son has everlasting life, but he who does not believe in the Son will not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him. So that wrath is for the unbeliever. Everlasting life is for the believer. Mm -hmm. Condemnation is for the unbeliever. He said that in verse 18. But those who believe, there's no condemnation. See, so condemnation for the believer, uh, no condemnation for the believer, condemnation for the unbeliever. Chapter, verse 36 says the believer gets eternal life, the unbeliever gets the wrath of God. Okay. Uh, you see? 
So John takes a whole other direction, just believers and unbelievers. This is beautiful. Okay, now let's look at this. Now let's, John just, he nails it. He just rolls with this same train of thought. Verse 34, John 6, 34. Okay. Then they said to him, Lord, always give us this bread. Okay, oh, let's, I'll start at 33. 33, he says, For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. And then he said, they said to him, Lord, always give us this bread. And then Jesus said to them, I, see, he's introducing himself as that bread. He's introducing himself as the solution. Yeah. I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never hunger. Okay? Yeah. He who believes in me will never thirst. Now, I want you to see this in Matthew. This is heavy. Um, Matthew chapter 5, when he's talking about the Beatitudes. Yeah. Right? He verse says, six, verse six. okay, he says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Okay, but that's in Matthew, and that's in Sermon on the Mount, mm -hmm. where he's a lot of law language. Right. Okay? But when he's going to grace language, mm -hmm. when he's putting it on him, in Matthew, he puts it on you. Right, right. You got to do all these things, mm -hmm. or you could go to hell, you could be judged, you could be condemned. You know, you... You, you, you don't cut off your arm and you, uh, pluck out your eye, you're, you're facing hell. You know, right? He says that. He's a lot of hell talk. Mm -hmm. Okay? John doesn't go with any hell talk. He actually tells you the solution. You, you won't perish mm -hmm. if you believe in the Son. You'll have eternal life through the believing on the Son. So, but here, there it said, uh, let's see, uh, verse 6, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. What does Jesus say? Verse 35 now, John 6, 35. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never hunger. He who believes on me will never thirst. Right? Mm -hmm. So that hungering and thirsting for righteousness is filled when you come to Christ, the Lord, our righteousness. Yeah, right? It's not through, not through oh, hunger, hunger and thirsting after righteousness. Old Testament says, that we refer to Jesus as the Lord, our righteousness. Yeah. And our righteousness is of him. And that we will be established in righteousness because our righteousness will be of him. It says that in Isaiah, uh, it says that in Jeremiah, uh, uh, where does it say that? Uh, yeah, no, Isaiah 54. Isaiah. It says our righteousness will be of him. Right, right. Yeah. And it will yeah, be established of, in righteousness. Last verse of 54. And, and I think the very next chapter talks about him being, I think one of those chapters talk about him being the Lord, our righteousness. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So hungry and thirsty for righteousness is to bring you to Jesus. Yes. Okay, and he says, once you've come to Jesus, you'll never hunger and you'll never thirst. Mm -hmm. Okay, are, are you feeling me? Correct. This is the direction John takes. He doesn't go there first, and then Jesus does bring you to believing on him later in Matthew and Luke, and eventually he goes there, talking about that, that every sin will be forgiven. He says in Matthew, every sin will be forgiven except for blasphemy. Mm -hmm. So what is he referring to there? Every sin forgiven. This is the cross. It's the cross. Yeah. So he does say that in Matthew. He does refer to that. And later in Matthew, he says, when he's talking about the, uh, the, the communion, he says, this is, he takes the wine, he says, this is my blood for the new covenant for the forgiveness of sins. So he's introducing the cross there. So he does bring you toward the cross when he's in Matthew and these other places, and he eventually does go to the cross, okay? But John is just hitting you with what you're going to get on account of the cross, what you're going to get through faith in Jesus Christ. And look what he says. So with him, it, coming to him, you'll never hunger. So you're hungering and thirsting for righteousness, right? Mm -hmm. Did, he said that in Matthew. Right. Those who hunger and thirst for righteousness will be filled. Well, here he's saying that's where you get your fill. Coming, yeah, coming to, to him. him. Coming to him. You won't, right? You'll never hunger. Believing on him, that hunger and thirst for righteousness is filled. Right? Yeah, it's not through the now, how they would receive that in Matthew, hunger and thirst for righteousness, you know, uh, you'll yeah. be filled, yeah. those who hunger and thirst. I don't know how they would take that. I don't live under the law. Right, right. I don't know how they would receive that. Yeah. People try and expound on that and explain that. You know, Honestly, I really don't have a clue how they would receive that being living under the law. Mm -hmm. But us living under grace, this is what we need to know. Right. Yeah. That he is the bread of life, and when we come to him, we'll never hunger for righteousness. You'll never thirst for, for righteousness, because he's the Lord, our righteousness. Mm -hmm. Because I'm established in righteousness, my righteousness is of him. Mm -hmm. That's what it says in Romans chapter 3. He says that God is now imputing his righteousness, 
unto those who believe. Amen. This is for the believer. Amen. This is good. for the believer. A righteousness of God given to me. I've found it. I don't seek it. Right? right. I don't seek righteousness. I've found it in Christ. Yeah, we already, we already right? And I've received it through Christ. Yeah. Right? The Bible says that we, we he's down, he says it's his obedience that makes us righteous, not ours. Yeah. Right? Right. He says, but I said to you that you also have seen, he says, but I said to you that you also have seen me and do not believe. This is verse 36, John 6, 36. Mm -hmm. All that the Father gives me will come to me, and the one who comes to me, I will no means cast out. That's heavy. He says, all those that come to me, I won't cast out. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right? Right. Now, we read in Reve the book of Revelations that God will spit you out of your mouth if you're lukewarm. Okay. Right. And they apply that to Christians. Jesus says right here, those who believe on him, will, he will no way cast you out. You're not yes, going is, anywhere. Jesus said both. Right? Yeah, Jesus yeah, said both. Yeah, that's, thank you, because yeah, in Revelations, it's Jesus Jesus talking Jesus. too. Yeah, so it's both. So you see, so you he's talking to different places. Yeah, so you have to be one So the other. this is grace. He's saying you believe on him, you won't, I won't cast you out. Right. When he goes into, and when he's talking to this, they, people just think because he's talking to these churches. Yeah. That it applies to Christians. Right. Because right, he's right. talking to the churches in Revelation and he's threatening to spit you out if you're lukewarm. Mm -hmm. But you gotta look at context. In the context, he talks about, you know, uh, you think you're rich and you have need of nothing. No Christian would say that. Right? No Christian would say that. You don't that. know you're naked, you're wretched, yeah, yeah. You, you're a mess, okay? Yeah. So he's still talking to the church. That, he's writing to the church, he's still yeah. talking. So obviously, not everybody in the church is saved. Right? Right, right yeah, a lot of. See, of, so you got to understand what you got to look at context. Just, just what you really want to know the truth. Listen to Jesus when he's talking about grace. Just when he's talking, talking about what you're going to get through him, and yeah. he says, "I will no way cast you out." Mm -hmm. He said, right? "Right, all that the Father gives me will come to me, and the one who comes to me, I will no means cast out. I will not spit you out." He says in Revelations elsewhere, it says that once you're written in the Book of Life, I won't blot you out. Mm -hmm. You don't go anywhere. So once you're there, you're there. Once you've come to Jesus, he won't cast you out. He's not going to blot you out. He's not going to spit you out. So you've got to look at context. People, you know, see, that's the thing. That's, people are mixing things together, and they're, they're, they're not talking out two sides of their face. He'll, he'll, he won't, he'll spit you out, but he won't cast you out. You know, um, by every other word you speak, you'll be condemned. But there's no condemnation for you in Christ. You're in the hand of God. Are you kidding me? fall into the uh, hands of the uh, God. Uh, he says, he says, um, uh, no un unless happened. you're more righteous than the Pharisees, you're not going to get in the kingdom. You're not going to get in the kingdom unless you're born again. Yeah. You see what I mean? One, you're in the hand of God, and the other one, you yeah. fall into the hands of the living God. One, Jesus says, one, Jesus, Jesus says that no one can snatch you out of my hand, no one can snatch you out of my Father's hand. But then in Hebrews chapter 10, he says, it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. So which is it? Well, yeah. if you're in his hand, you don't have to worry falling into his hand because right. you're already there, mm -hmm. right? The person who has to fear falling into his hand obviously isn't here. Yeah, they're outside. You, you see what I mean? Yeah. So you see how people, but they're throwing it, they're jumbling it all together. No wonder they're And you can't person. do that. You can't. you can't, but you do. When you do, you ruin everything. Right, right. That's heavy. Mm -hmm. Isn't this good? Yeah, it is, yeah. Okay, so let's get to this. Okay, so we got to get to where I'm going. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Okay, so um, all that the Father gives me will come to me, and the one who comes to me, I will no means cast out. No means. No, well, some say no wise. What yeah. that means, I will no way cast you out. I will no way spit you out of my mouth. Okay? Mm -hmm. For I came down from heaven, not to do my, fa my own will, but the will of the Father who sent me. And this is the will of the Father who sent me. That all, here's his will. Remember we saw what his commandment is, the new commandment? Mm -hmm. Receive his love and pass it on. Right. New commandment, love one another the way I love you. Okay, so receive my love and pass it on. Okay, it's, receive, it's responding to his love and then, you know, a good response to God's love is to share it. Mm -hmm. A good response to God's love is to understand his love, receive it, and then share it. Okay, that's a, it's a good healthy response to his love. Okay, mm -hmm. right? Um, he says, and this is the will of the Father. Now, his, this is his will. Mm -hmm. when, Jesus introduced, when Jesus introduced himself as a solution, this is the Father's will. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. Now, this is the will of the Father who sent me, that all he has given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise him up in the last day. Right? The people worried about losing their salvation. Sure. Can you lose your salvation? 
I get, sure, if you believe you can. I don't think you can. Uh, if you believe you can. I don't think yeah, you I mean, can if you believe you can. Uh, if, you're, uh, if you're truly in Christ, well, you, okay. he, still, he still has you. He says even if you don't believe, he remains Yeah, he faithful. says even if you're faithless, he'll he remain, remain faithful. faithful. Yes, and he says that his gifts and his cause are irrevocable. So I don't believe so, you can lose your salvation, not at all. But I believe that you can believe you can and that you live as if you did. You because just, you think you did. It just mess with your head during yeah, Right, that's yeah. what I mean. Yeah, that's what I mean. don't believe you cannot, he says that I will yeah. not lose you. See, my yeah. point is, is why we, what I, the point I was trying to make is, sure, you, you believe you, it, do you want to believe you can or do you want to believe you can't? Yeah, you're not going to The, be the able problem, to the thing is, yeah. you're, tr you're putting it on you and you're able to keep it. Jesus says here, I won't lose you. So you put it on him and his ability to keep you. First Peter chapter one through five says God that we have a reservation in heaven and we are kept by the power of God. That's right. We gotta put our faith in him. Go read First Peter chapter right. chapter one, verse one through five, and it says that we have a reservation in heaven and we are kept by the power of God. Mm -hmm. He's gonna keep you. He says, I will not lose you. So sure, do you can do you think you can lose your salvation? I guess so. If you believe you can, um, you you'll live like you did, you know, because you think you you believe that stuff, mm -hmm. and people are preaching it. But Jesus is putting it on him. This is where you want to put it on him. If you if you're putting it on you and thinking, well, if, sure, if I can if I condemn somebody, I could be condemned, mm -hmm. right? Right, right, right. That's believing I can lose my salvation. And you're you're trying to work out your own. Salvation. Oh, you're trying to establish your own yeah, righteousness. righteousness. That's what I mean, yeah. Right? Yeah. And in Romans chapter 10, uh, 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 yeah, Romans chapter 10 says that we're, we're supposed to stop establishing our own righteousness and just submit to the righteousness of God because Jesus ended the law for righteousness. So we stop establishing our own. Yeah. Okay, so, for it. Yeah. so he says, he, he, says he, will, he will lose nothing, verse 39. Mm -hmm. This is the will of the Father who sent me that he will is given that all he has given me I will lose none, but should raise them up in the last day. He didn't just not lose you; he raises you up. Okay, and this is the will of him who sent me. This is the will of the Father now for believers. All right, yeah. that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up in the last day. So there you go. Okay, mm -hmm. so there you have the new commandment: receive my love, mm -hmm. receive my love, and, and share it. Right? Love one another as I have loved you. In, in the work of God, he says, this is the work, to believe on the Son. And what is the will of the Father? Believe on the Son so he can raise you up in the last day. And I won't lose you. I won't cast you out. I will no way cast you out, and I won't lose you. Oh, my God, that's good. Yeah. That's really good. Okay, so let's go here. Let's wrap it all up. You ready? Yeah, of course. First John. Oh my God, I had so much here. First John. Uh, where was I? Oh yeah, the new commandment. Here it is. First John 3. to find that one that says that uh, his commandments are not burdensome. Where is that? I thought it was right here. I thought it was in five something. Um, it's um, it's a different word in the King James. His commandments are not burdensome. His commandments are not burdensome. Oh, first John five three. Oh, okay. Why didn't I not have that highlighted of all things I have in here? His commandments are not grievous, it says in King James. Huh? In, the, in the King James, it says grievous instead of burdensome. So it's the same idea. Yeah. Okay, now, off the bat, 
When Jesus was, that was a huge burden when Jesus was putting all those commandments. You have to love everybody, bless yeah. everybody. You, can, you know, you got to turn the other cheek. You got to give to everybody. You know, you got to lend to anybody. Mm-hmm. You, right? A big burden. Right? Mm-hmm. You can't every, you got to control your anger or it's murder. Right? right. You got to, you, you lust. You already committed the act of adultery. You know, it's interesting. Those are two capital punishment crimes. You know, the, the adultery was capital punishment. You should be stoned for committing adultery. Mm-hmm. Murder in the Old Covenant, you should be stoned There's one other for one. murder. One yeah, other one. homosexuals yeah. too. Yeah, they're supposed also, to be killed too. Homosexuals yeah. supposed to be killed. There's a lot of them. Yeah, there's, 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 there's not just one other. There's no, many there's, of them. There's many of them. Yeah, yeah there's many of them. There's not yeah, just one other one. Sabbath, I, I'm just saying Sabbath, that those yeah. two were capital punishment crimes. Yeah, those two were definitely. That's all I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, okay. Right. Okay. okay. There's, there's, there's a lot of them that are cap, capital capital Yeah, partner. breaking the Sabbath is a capital punishment. Yeah. Because we pick up firewood. Like, yeah. So. Uh, it says that um, um, homosexual, if you lie with one, if one should lie with a man the way that they should lie yeah, with yeah, a woman, that they, that's that. They're, 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 yeah, they should yeah. both be they should be put to death. Right. So, um, but my point is those that capital punishment crimes. He says if you even lust, you already committed the act of murder. Right. Right. Adultery. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Right. Lots, yeah. yeah. You already committed the act of, of adultery. Right. Right. And murder too. He says you're even angry. You already committed in your heart. In yeah, your heart. It's a heart issue. Yeah. Stone. Right. right? Yeah. So let's look at this. So he's, so my point is that that was a burden. Yeah. And it says here in verse three, for this is the love of God, uh, chapter five, verse three. This is the love of God that we keep His commandments, and His commandments are not burdensome. So that's telling you that His commandments are not burdensome. Mm-hmm. You with me? Yes. Okay. So if you want to go with or you want to go with someone on the mount, you're going to find a burden. Yeah. Okay. Right. Now let's look. Why does he say his commandments are not burdensome? Now remember when I said. He said this is the work of God. When he said, "What works must we do to do the works of God?" And he says, "This is work. Believe on the Son." Mm-hmm. And he said something similar when he talked about his will. Believe on the Son, He'll raise you up. Mm-hmm. Okay. So it's believing on His Son. It's His work, His will, right? Yeah. His commandment. And, and and the commandment was what? Is to believe and receive. And, and love yeah. one another as I have loved you. Yeah, receive so just receive. receive my love and please pass, pass it on. on. Pass it on. Okay? Yeah. Now, now that's not a burden. Right. To believe on the Son, receive his love, and share it. Right. There's no burden in that. Now when he says his commandments are not burdensome, let's look at what he's talking about. Go back to verse 23. Chapter 3, verse 23. Okay. Well, we'll back up to 22. Okay. Well, let's back up at 20. This is good stuff right here. Look at 20. Yeah. For if our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart. See, right there. Does God want us living condemned? No. Does that sound like God wants you living condemned? No. Fearing that any idle word I speak, I will be condemned. That's what Jesus said. He said, by any idle word you speak, you'll be condemned. Mm-hmm. He doesn't want you living like that. Right? Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, because he took you into the fact, later John takes you into the fact that if you just believe, you won't be condemned. Mm-hmm. So no condemnation for the believer. So now he says, but if your heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart. He knows all things. He knows everything, every struggle you're going through, and he's not condemning you. So why are you condemning yourself? We know he's saying that because in verse 19 it says, we shall assure our hearts before him. It's assurance. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's good. That's really good. Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence toward God. So you want to have confidence toward God, stop condemning yourself. Because right. Paul says that there's no condemnation for those in Christ. Jesus said those who believe will not be condemned. Those who don't believe are condemned already for not believing on the Son. So Jesus is saying no condemnation. Paul is saying there's no condemnation. He says here, beloved, if our heart does not condemn us. Most people would read that and say, well, that's when you're doing everything right. You wouldn't, of course, you know, there's no condemnation. You know, of course. It's kind of like that scripture that says, those who, uh, there's no condemnation for you in Christ. And, and they say, that's that. if you're really committed, if you're really walking, obedient, you're you know, that there's no condemnation. Flesh, yeah. That's not the deal. That's yeah. why would he say, there's no, of course there's no condemnation if I'm super obedient. Yeah. Of course. Of course. He's saying there's no condemnation for those in Christ because you should be condemned. Yeah. And you're not. Right, right, right. That's the point. Right, right. Otherwise, right. it's redundant. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what he's saying here. If your heart does not condemn us, we can have confidence toward God. Does your confidence, become, can be, does your confidence toward God come because you're super obedient? No. Right? Because, because I, you can go back and forth. My, yeah. my confidence toward God comes because, like in Hebrews chapter 4, he says that 
He sympathizes with our weakness. Therefore, we can come boldly to the throne of grace and receive mercy and grace anytime we need it. He says elsewhere in Hebrews chapter 10, he says that we can, we can come into the holiest boldly Amen. through the blood. Amen. That's my confidence because it's a throne of grace. The confidence is in his blood. That's why I can have a boldness. That's my confidence, mm -hmm. okay? And that's what he's talking about here. If your heart does not condemn you, we can have confidence with God. So stop condemning yourself, mm -hmm. right? And whatever we ask, receive from him, verse 22, because we keep his commandments, okay? And do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Now, right there, because we keep his commandments. Most people would go to Ten Commandments, you know, the law, something, or maybe so Sermon Christ, on the Mount. Christ commandments. Yeah. Sermon on the Mount. Yeah, quite Christ were certain commandments that Jesus said. He talked about keeping his commandments, yeah. and we want to go there, you yeah. know. So you don't go there. It's so you don't go like anywhere. So you go where it's not a burden. What he, what he said, what he said in chapter 5, a little later, he says yeah. his commandments are not burdensome. So you don't go under a burden. Yeah. yeah. Where you go where it's not a burden. Right. He, he expounds on what commandments he's talking about. Well, it's a praise God. You Isn't that good? Yeah, that's important. Yeah. And whatever we ask, we receive from him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. And this is his commandment, that we should believe on, his name, on the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he gave commandment. Isn't that what I said earlier? Mm -hmm. What was the work? Believe on the son. What is, what is his will? To believe on the son. What is the commandment? The new commandment? Mm -hmm. To love one another as he gave commandment. Mm -hmm. How did he give the commandment? Love as I love you. See, this is not a burden. I'm just receiving this amazing agape love of God, independent of my performance, showering me with abundance of mercy and abundance of grace, and, and, and I'm, passing, I'm sharing it because mm -hmm. I've experienced it. That's why it has to come first. Because you got to experience what it is, agape love, before you can give it. We, in and of ourselves, we do not have agape love. We're tit for tat. We, you, you hurt me, I hurt you. You want to give me the cold shoulder? I'll give you one. You know, we're tit for tat. Mm -hmm. That's not agape love. No, no. Agape love is turning the other cheek. Right, right, right. Ag agape love is, is loving those who hate you. Agape love is returning your evil with good. That's agape love. Mm -hmm. And the only way we're going to have that is if we experience it, know what that's really like. And that's why we've got to get the right picture of God and receive from him what we're supposed to be giving. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. So question, what are you getting from God? His love. Huh? His love. What are you getting from God? It's, I know, right? Yeah, that's what it is. So basically, what I, John just takes you to the heart of God. So let's go to uh, 1 John 4, 4.19. 1 First John 4.19. 4, no, we're not done yet. Oh, no. Okay. See, John, all these are in John. Everything I just walked through is John, right? Here in his love, not that we love God, but that he loved us. Mm -hmm. First John 4, 10. Right now we're looking at John, John, uh, 1 John 4, 19. Mm -hmm. We love him because he first loved us, right? It's John. God so loved the world that he gave his only, son, only begotten son. If we believe on him, we won't perish, but have eternal life. That's John. Receive him. He gives you a right to become a child of God. It's John. Mm -hmm. The new commandment, to love one another as I have loved you, it's John. One work, he says, those guys said, what works must we do to do the works of God? He says, this is the work. Believe on the Son. Believe on the one whom he sent. Mm -hmm. Right? Well, that's John. The new will, right? We walk through that about his will is that he not lose you and that you, he raise you up and that, that um, uh, uh, he won't cast you out. You know, all that beautiful stuff, that's John, right? And the two, new commandment, the, two, the one commandment that he actually pieced out in two, that this is the commandment, that we should believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he gave commandment, right? Mm -hmm. That's John. Oh, my gosh. And let's look at this. Let's go back to John. Let's look at what else is in John, because John nails it. John doesn't play games. First John, you mean, right? Yeah, we're in first, yeah, let's go to first John. First John chapter 2, verse 1. My little children, I was talking to Christians, mm -hmm. these things I write to you that you not sin. Okay, so he's not encouraging sin. Matter of fact, he's about to drop a bomb, and that's why, he probably, I, I believe that's why he's saying this. Because yeah. he's about to drop a huge bomb of grace. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is what grace is. 
Okay, my little children, I, I, I write you that you not sin. Okay, and if anyone sins, does he say confess it? No. Does he say uh, cry for mercy? Nope. Does he say, uh, you know, repent, feel really bad about it? Do you, you know, tell God how sorry you are? No. no, what he says, if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. Mm -hmm. He himself is the propitiation for our sins, and not only for ours, but for the whole world. Amen. Right there, it tells you if you sin, you're covered. Amen. That's what an advocate is. Somebody who's got your back. Right, and a lawyer, right? Lawyer. an intercessor. Yeah, an intercessor. Right? Are you feeling me? Yes. And go to 12. Again, it's little children. When he talks to children, he's, he's not telling you to confess your sins. When he's talking to children, he says your sins are covered. Mm -hmm. Your sins are forgiven. It's not confess to be forgiven. Like right. he said in chapter 1, right. uh, all of chapter 1, he didn't refer to children. But in chapter 2, when he refers to children, he says if you sin, you have an advocate. And look what he says here. Verse 12, 1 John uh, 2, 12. I write you little children, see, children, mm -hmm. because your sins are forgiven. For his namesake. You know what that means, for his namesake? It means that he's for his reputation. It's just something he chose to do. Right, right. Yeah. This is a God thing. Mm -hmm. It's, a, it's for the sake of my reputation that I am filled with loving kindness and I love to forgive thousands. Mm -hmm. This is my nature, okay? And I had to give you the law for a while because you guys were so proud. You said you can do everything mm -hmm. I you say. Yeah. You told me in, 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 in uh, Exodus chapter... 19, I, told, I was telling you I want you to keep my command in my covenant. I hadn't even given it to you yet, and I said I want you to keep my covenant. And you guys are like, oh, we'll do everything. We're doers. Mm -hmm. you know. And you've been doing nothing but complain ever since I brought you out of the Red, through the Red Sea. You've been doing nothing but complain. And now you're saying we'll do it. We're doers. Dude, here's the law to show you you're not doers. Okay, And he gives them the law, and that's what the law was for. Romans 3.19, the law was given to silence our pride and to show us our guilt. Mm -hmm. That's what he gave the law for, to silence that pride, that boasting of how good you are. We're such big doers. No, you're complainers. You're whiners. You've been rebelling against me ever since I brought you through the Red Sea. I've had you cry about water, so I send water from a rock. You cry, you cry about uh, uh, um, food, so I give you manna from heaven. You cry about no meat, so I send quail into your camp. All that happened between the Red Sea and where he gave the law. Right, right. Yeah. Between the Red Sea and the law, all that was going on. They were whining, whining, snowing, snowing. He kept providing, he kept taking care of them. But he talks about how he let them go hungry so that he could feed them. Okay, he let them come to this place so they could appreciate what he's doing. Right, right. Right? Yeah. But instead of just waiting and trusting, they complained and whined and sniveled. And here all of a sudden when he says, I want you to keep my covenant, he hadn't even given it to him yet. Oh, we'll do it. We're doers. Kawak. Here's some laws to show you you're not much of a doer, okay? And that's what that was. That's what that was all about. Isn't that good? Yeah. There's so much more in John. I got so much in John. It's not funny. Mm -hmm. But you see that? This is where John goes. I like how you said that the, um, the Billy Graham Crusades. They give out the little booklet of, of the Gospel John, of John. Yeah, yeah, they usually do that. Yeah. They don't give out Matthew. They don't give a little booklet of Lu Luke, uh, Luke or Mark. Yeah, they give John. little pamphlets of John. Right. And there's a reason for that, because that's the Gospel. Amen. Without any other mixture. Right. They call these others the Gospel: Matthew, Mark, and Luke. They call those the Gospels, but it's really not the Gospel. The Gospel is Jesus suffering and paying for your sins. Amen. Suffering in your place in which you're going to get through him. They come to the Father through me, and you'll be adopted in the family of God. I'll pour out my Holy Spirit, and you'll mm -hmm. be one with me. And you'll get God, I'll, God, God will impute his righteousness. You'll be robed with my righteousness. That's what you get to come into Jesus. But, you know, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John, they, they, they take you another direction that if, you, if you're comfortable mixing that stuff, you're going to be one confused cookie. Mm -hmm. Okay? You, you can't mix it. Let me. Jesus said, if you don't forgive, you won't be forgiven. Right? Mm. This is heavy. I love this. Don't go anywhere. I think it's a collision. Let me see. I think it's a collision. Let me see. No, I, uh, no, I want Ephesians. This is the best one for this. I'm going to end with this. Okay? Mm. You with me? Yeah. You hanging in there? Yep. I just want to end with this so you see what I'm talking about. Because this is a good end. 
Okay. Um, uh, I guess it is collisions. Don't go anywhere. Mm -hmm. I'll keep that one and this one. Those are both good. This is for the video. Okay. Therefore, as the elect, verse, okay, Colossians chapter 3, verse 12. Mm -hmm. Oh, we got to go. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, and long suffering, bearing with one another, and forgiving one. What did Jesus say? If you don't forgive, you won't be forgiven. He said that, mm -hmm. but that was before he went to the cross. This is Paul ministering after the cross to the Colossians, who weren't even under the law. Right. Right? Yeah. These are, these are Gentiles. He says, bearing with one another and forgiving one another, and forgiving one another, if anyone has a complaint against another, if I have a complaint against you, you did me wrong, and I'm complaining about it, you know, he hurt my feelings. <laughs> he owes me an apology. <laughs> he says, if anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, you also forgive. So there it's a forgiveness first. Like he said, a new commandment, Love one another as I have loved you. Mm -hmm. Here he's saying, forgive one another as I have forgiven you. Mm -hmm. Forgive one another. That's Jesus saying the same thing only through Paul right. after the cross. Uh -huh. Jesus was saying something else before the cross mm -hmm. in his flesh, in his body. But when he's ministering through Paul, the message he gave Paul, right? Paul said, I, only, I got my message by revelation of Jesus Christ. He's ministering through Paul now. But now Jesus is saying, forgive as he forgave you. You see that? And he says if anyone has any complaint against you. That means if you have any, if God has any complaint against you, something you hurt his feelings, you did him wrong, if he's got any complaint against you, he forgives you. Amen. Right? Amen. Amen. Because he's telling you to do that. If anyone has a, if I have a complaint, if you have a complaint against me, forgive me. Mm -hmm. Well, he's just forgiven the same way God forgave you. That means if God got any complaint against you, mm -hmm. any fault in you, right. any issues with you, he forgives you. Amen. Father, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for this message of grace. It's, it makes studying your word exciting. It, it makes, it, it helps us, it just, we enjoy you. We can come to you boldly. We don't have to fear you. We don't have to hide from you, cover ourselves with fig leaves and hide among the trees. We can see you looking for us and, and saying, where are you, Henry? I'm looking for you. Like the prodigal son, the father was looking for that son. It's, it's the bad things that that boy did to the father, taking the money and running, and he's still looking for him. Father, this is you. You're always looking for us. You're always, it, we, you found us. We are found by you. Like John Newton sang, he says, Amazing grace that saved a wretch like me. I was lost, but now I'm found. We were found by you. We were, you weren't the one lost. We didn't find you. You found us, Father. And we receive that. Thank you, Jesus. Amen and amen. Woohoo! Amen. <laughs>